Hello everyone, my name is Alonzo, and welcome to the Chosen Few Expat Network. Me and my wife Shanae decided to start this YouTube channel to help those who are relocating from their home countries to Latin America do all of the research that they need before they make their move, help them explore their country um, when they're in the process of making their move, and then through that, hopefully gain some connections that's going to help ease their transitions once they complete the move to their new country. Um, so for us, um, when we did our research, um, the place we decided to move to was Panama. So um, I guess the focus of this video is going to be, why Panama? Uh, so when we researched Panama, we found that uh, Panama consistently ranked first or second in almost every list of places to retire um, that we found. Not that we're quote unquote retiring, but if so many people are willing to live out their last days in a particular place, we figured there must be something good about it. So that caused us to maybe want to look deeper into it. <clears throat> um, so from there, we went on to investigate other things like uh, the cost of living. So when it comes to the cost of living, first thing you want to look at, of course, is housing. So if you're looking in the city, um, which, by the way, Panama, as you can see, is a major metropolitan city. Uh, a very modern city with a skyline riv rivaling any city in the U.S. Um, I don't know if people thought about, uh, you know, shacks and dirt roads and stuff when they thought of, of Panama, but it did surprise me um, how modern it was. Um, so with that, there does come some costs, you know, <clears throat> depending on your taste. So for the type of apartment I would expect an expat to want, um, say a two-bedroom, two-bath, nice apartment, in the city going to cost you around $850, $900 a month and up. Of course, there are less expensive options out there for you. You know, if you want some smaller apartments that maybe have like, you know, seven, 800 square feet or something smaller than that, you know, you can get those in the five, $600 range, you know, if, if you choose. But I think most expats, you know, are going to want a little bit bigger apartment. So you have to pay up a little bit for that. Um, and just one more price comparison we can give you is that if you wanted to rent a nice apartment with a Pacific Ocean view overlooking Avenue Balboa, um, that's going to cost you $1,100, $1,200 a month. So um, just by comparison, a uh, similar condo in, say, Chicago or Toronto, and Toronto overlooking Lake Ontario and Chicago overlooking Lake Michigan, going to cost you around $4,600 to $5,000 a month to rent. In New York, a similar condo that's overlooking the Hudson River is going to cost you between $7,000 and $10,000 a month to rent. So um, <clears throat> that's a great, great deal that you're getting in Panama if you're looking for something like that with a, an ocean type of a view. Um, if you want to move a little bit farther out from the city, of course, your prices are going to come down. Um, there are some other cities 15, 20 minutes outside of the city, Ariane and Chirera. Um, you can rent nice homes, three bedroom, two bath homes in these areas for $400, $450, $500 a month. Um, the thing with those areas is that there's not a lot of expats uh, living in those areas. Um, and so you need to be ready to immerse yourself within the Panamanian culture if you want to live in those areas. Still some nice neighborhoods and everything. It's just not a concentrated community of expats. So that may or may not work for some people. Um, there's another community in that area um, called Playa Dorada that is gated, um, and it does have a beach, uh, basketball court, a uh, playground for the kids. Um, you can rent three bedroom, three bath houses in that area. I've seen for around $550 to $700 a month. Um, and the apartments, they do have a set of apartments there that you can rent uh, for like the $450 to $500 a month range in that development. Um, <clears throat> moving further down the coast, about an hour outside of Panama City, which is the area that we're going to live, the uh, Coronado and Nueva Gorgona area. Um, you can rent a beachfront condo, two bedroom, two bath, beachfront condo for around $750 a month and up. So that's toes in the sand, you know, down the elevator, out the door, past the pool, and into the beach uh, for $750 to $800 a month. So that's a great deal. Um, if you did want something more conservative, more quiet, you can go find you a mountain home, you know, on some land with some fruit trees that you can rent for uh, around $350 to $400 a month is what we found. 
Um, there's other areas of the country where you can rent them for less than that. Um, so that's pretty much the situation with the housing. Going to vary greatly depending upon your tastes and your wants. <clears throat> um, so the next thing we probably want to take a look at here is the weather. Um, so the weather in Panama, the average annual temperature is 82 degrees. Um, so that's very nice. Uh, can't beat that. Um, also, one interesting thing that I found is that Panama has never been hit by a hurricane, okay? No hurricane has ever made landfall in the history of Panama. Um, when I did do the research, uh, Hurricane Martha popped up in 69. It was saying some people were saying, okay, that made landfall. But uh, by the time that made landfall, it was a tropical storm with winds of less than 50 miles an hour. Um, and that was up in Veracruz area near the Costa Rican border. Now, they have had a couple of close calls here. A couple of hurricanes maybe hit in Costa Rica, 40, 50 miles from the border. Uh, but Panama's never been hit. And um, it's largely because Panama is 8 degrees above the equator. So that is going to be below the, the hurricane zone. So uh, it's very safe in terms of uh, that type of weather. Um, also, Panama does not have any active volcanoes. Um, one of the dormant volcanoes is Vulcan Baru. Which you can get a great view of from the mountain town of Boquete. Um, and then there's also another dormant volcano um, in El Valle, um, which is actually built inside of the crater of the dormant volcano. Um, so you can imagine in these areas, you know, the rich volcanic soil, uh, the type of crops you can get from that, um, including the coffee. The coffee here is tremendous. Um, but um, <clears throat> that's some of what you get there. Um, in terms of the weather, um, in those mountain cities like Boquete, Altos de Maria, El Valle, you're going to find the climate's a little bit more spring-like. A lot of breeze is coming through. You can just keep your windows open um, and you'll be good. Um, you don't have to really run your AC and that keeps your, your utility costs down. So speaking of utilities, um, that's one thing I neglected to mention um, during the cost of living. Um, so utilities, like I said, AC, it can run as low as 20 or so dollars a month if you're in those mountain areas. On average, it may run you around 70 to 170 dollars a month, depending upon how much you run your AC. Um, and you will run it more, let's just say, in Panama City and in the areas um, at sea level that are near the beach. The climate's going to be a lot more hot and humid in those areas. Um, I don't know if you, if you know about you guys, but hey, I'll, I'll take heat. I grew up near Chicago, Gary, Indiana, near Chicago. So I'll take hot and humid all day, every day. It's fine with me. Um, but you are going to pay for it in terms of your AC. Um, the other bills you're looking at, um, most homes there are not built with any furnace. So if you think about an average annual temperature of 82 degrees, no furnace, you don't need gas and you don't need heat, right? So um, some people do have to buy a propane tank um, to maybe run their stove off of or their dryer if they don't have an electric stove or dryer but that only costs you about twenty dollars for once every four months three or four months or so um <clears throat> water most oftentimes is included in your rent and if it's not water bills around eight dollars a month um you can rent uh, i mean you can get two cell phones uh, for about thirty dollars a month get your sim card have plenty of data plenty of minutes on it um, for about twenty five to thirty dollars a month most people are going to utilize WhatsApp to be in touch with their people back home. It's a great application you can use for voice over internet calling, sending over videos and pictures and everything. Um, so a lot of people will use that. Um, the other thing I think on cost I want to mention is the car insurance. They're telling me it's around $350 to $400 for the whole year and that it'll cost uh, somewhere around $60 for the whole year to rent your, I mean not to rent your car too register your car um, it's going to cost you about sixty dollars uh, for the whole year so um, that's a pretty good deal there um, i also neglected to mention the food so the food in panama is outstanding you know it's great if you think about it like i just mentioned before about the um the type of soil that they have here so they have a lot of fresh produce here a lot of organic non-gmo produce here. So there's fruit and vegetable stands almost everywhere. So that translates to a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, even in your grocery stores, going to be fresher and, and, and better than what you ha would have 
in the U.S. or um, in Europe. And they're going to be less expensive. Um, but we went here, just to tell you about a personal experience, we went to a, a, a fruit market, vegetable market. We were here about 10 days. We bought uh, about $15 worth of vegetables and fruits. And that lasted us the whole, the whole time. Uh, and we left stuff in the refrigerator when it was time for us to leave. So, um, you know, and then it's, um, another thing with the food is that we were able to walk down the beach, talk to the fishermen down there, about a half mile down the beach, buy two red snappers um, for $9, like $3 a pound. So I'm um, not sure how much you all know about fish, but uh, red snapper is going to cost you like $20 a pound and up, $20, $24 a pound. So you get a great deal on, on, on things like that. And you come back into your condo, you cook it up, fry it up, eat that thing that was swimming in the ocean like an hour ago. Now you know what's on your plate is fresh. I mean, it's delicious. I mean, you just, you know, it's the type of thing you can't beat. And I remember eight or so days into that trip, you know, I was asking, you know, my wife was like, you know, baby, how do you feel? You know, how are you feeling? You know, she's like, oh, I feel great. I'm like, oh, me too. You know, because I was feeling all, you know, like a lot slim and trim considering the fact that we were on the beach every day and we were eating like we weren't like pigging out but you know we were eating very well you know eating eating good and drinking every day so uh on the beach and yet and still even through that uh we both still felt more healthy and more trim you know and i firmly believe it's because we didn't we weren't consuming all of those type of preservatives and everything that we have here in our food in the U.S. and you all may be coming from Europe, you know, you probably have the same thing. So um, I think that's pretty much it on that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to get into here is the culture in Panama. So Panamanians are generally very, very friendly people, very happy people. Um, Panama is ranked number six in terms of the happiest countries to live on Earth by the Happy Planet Index. And you can definitely see that um, when you're here amongst the people. Um, about 80% of the people do speak Spanish. Um, so, you know, if they work in uh, major hotels and some, some upscale restaurants, you'll find some English speakers. Uh, but for the most part, they're going to speak Spanish. Um, even a lot of your cab drivers are not, are not going to speak English. But they do have an option here for Uber. So, so, um, so like an Uber English option. So on your app, you can select Uber English. You can get an uh, English Uber driver, which is a great option. By the way, that's something else that I didn't mention in terms of cost. Like you can Uber all over the place in Panama City for, you know, two dollars, two fifty, three fifty, all over the place. And um, they have a great public transportation system, buses, a brand new subway um, thing that costs like less than a dollar to ride that. And you can get all the way from Panama City to, to Costa Rica on a bus for like eight bucks. OK, that's like a. I think it's about a seven or eight hour bus ride that you can, you know, you can make all the way to the Costa Rican border. So, um, so that was another thing that I did not mention before, but, um, and you just can't, can't beat that. So, um, getting back to the culture, um, we look at the, at the demographics, um, of Panama, the racial demographics, you have about 65% of the people are, um, so-called mestizos. Um, they, they are, um, native and indigenous people mixed with white Europeans, and they call mestizos um, in Panama. And then after that, you have 12% of the people that are um, full-blood indigenous um, native people, um, the native Indian people. And after that, there's 9% of so-called black or Afro-Caribbean, and then you have a 7% um, what they call mulatto, which is um, black and white European mix. And then as a seven percent uh, white Europeans, so that alone tells you that the culture is going to be drastically different from what you're used to in the U.S. or Europe, just based on that um, racial demographic. Now, another thing that's going to play into that here also is the religious demographic. So, um, in Panama, you have like ninety percent of the people are Christians. Um, very large percentage, 60 some percent of those are Catholic, followed by Protestants, so like about 25 percent Protestants. Um, so what you're going to find here in Panama, OK, is like God is first. OK, there's God first, then family, you know, right up there together. So um, Panamanians are really, really uh, close knit group of people. They have a tight knit group of friends 
and value their family and their um, holidays and time with them. So as expats, you're going to want to come in and, you know, think you're just going to meet people and, you know, and, but it, that Panamanian is going to make you work a little bit to crack that inner circle, you know, of, uh, of their tight knit friends. They're still very friendly people um, just in general, but in terms of becoming close friends, you know, uh, they're going to make you earn it, which, you know, which, which more of us should, you know, that's actually a good, a good trait to have. So um, that tells you a little bit about the, the culture. A couple of things on the downside is that you can have an appointment with someone. It's, it's highly likely they're going to be late. Uh, sometimes folk may not show up. Uh, also, it seems to be more red tape um, in ter just in terms of getting things done um, at government offices and things like that. And then just in general, standing in line, you may have to, you know, sh gain some patience. Say so if you're in line at the bank, you know, it's going to things that seem like it should take you know, no time at all, it's going to take longer. So that can be frustrating for some people. Um, it's another part of the culture, though, that's there. So um, I think the last thing we wanted to try to cover was the location. So for us, the location of Panama is very, very attractive. It's very centrally located. It is the southernmost country in Central America. It's bordered by Colombia to the south and Costa Rica to the north. Um, so it's only a three hour, 15 minute plane ride from Atlanta two hours and 15 minute plane ride from Miami. So if you want to go back and visit, um, you can. Or if your family want to come visit you, it's very easy for them to do so. Or better yet, if they just want to make the move down to Panama and join you, hey, that would be even better. Um, and they can do so very easily. And it's gonna be a lot less expensive than uh, getting a plane ticket to Europe or something somewhere. So um, we really like the location. The Tocumen um, International Airport in Panama is a very, very large airport. It's a, it's a central hub. They have a lot of nonstop flights to all of the major U.S. cities and South American cities and, and, and cities in Europe all over the world. Um, so we're looking forward to exploring some of the cities in South America, starting with uh, a lot of the cities in Colombia because it's, it's very, very close. Um, but you can get to the Caribbean very easily, you know, hour, hour and a half flight to some of these places. Um, so we really, really love the location of Panama also. Um, so any one of these topics, you know, you can cover uh, on its own, but we just want to give you a quick overview of some of the reasons why we decided to choose Panama. And um, we want to thank you for joining us here at the Chosen Few Expat Network, and we'll see you all next time. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell um, so that you can be notified of our other videos.